There you go. He's so awkward. He looks like he's gonna fall. <laughs> oh. I don't want to get in a fight on roller skates. Just stand back there, everybody. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey! <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> oh. That's a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is where he needs the roller skates. <laughs> yeah! Right? So, Colin from Canada, you're back? Yes. Have you tried just Bieber's hole? <laughs> I mean, the, the Bieber holes from Tim Horton's holes. You were trying to describe this to me. I've never heard of it. It just came out in the news. American Finally, news? Tim Hortons and Justin Bieber have teamed up to sell donut holes in Canada. <laughs> We've been waiting. Well, I mean, there's been a gap in the market since the Hobbit holes went away. I know. And Tim Horton needs to appeal to younger demographics, so they hired Justin Bieber to sell his holes. He's pretty hip. His donut holes. He's hip with the kids. <laughs> he needs some more money. I'm sorry I didn't bring some down. It's all right. That's all right. COVID precautions and stuff, they would have, you know, Justin not allowed Justin Bieber's to... holes have to stay in Canada. Yeah. Now. They yeah. need to decontaminate the Bieber holes. <laughs> <laughs> They threw them into the incinerator at the airport. <laughs> it's on the sign, like, no guns, no knives, no Justin Bieber holes. <laughs> it's just like a strike through them. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry for Justin Bieber. I'm, s I'm s sorry. We have so many bad musicians in Canada. We have plenty of bad musicians here. That's Never, right. ever apologize for Norm MacDonald. Oh, yeah. Norm. Dean Stockwell died. Is he Canadian? No. No. Oh. I have something to tell you, and it can't wait. What is it? I'm pregnant. Oh, oh she's no, so she's fucking ex dead. She's extra dead. <laughs> oh. So where did this movie come from? <laughs> a, a dumpster. <laughs> Almost literally. <laughs> like, where did we, where did we find this? Well, this is a newly released Blu-ray. So we just heard about it because Vinegar Syndrome released a new Blu-ray, and Vinegar Syndrome releases good shit. Yes, we're, we're not promoted or sponsored by Vinegar Syndrome, they just do quality work. Uh, but we're here on our Spotlight episode to talk about New York Ninja. Oh yeah? The <laughs> New York Ninja's a real hero. You're right. This is uh, Vinegar Syndrome bought out the library from some company that went out of business. So they got all their, you know, titles. And in that, they also got just reels and reels of footage, unedited footage. And that footage was New York Ninja, a movie that was shot and never edited, either filmed without sound or the audio just got lost somewhere. So they, they reconstructed the movie, which... When you watch the movie, it seems like more of an undertaking than you could possibly expect. It's like putting together a puzzle. So somebody filmed this. They had the good sense not to finish it. <laughs> and so then Vinegar Syndrome comes along and just ruins everything. <laughs> I'm going to say Vinegar Syndrome saved the day. I'm the boss here. That's my job. But you, uh -huh. you're one of the best damn reporters and this city needs you. It's important. Yeah. We have to stop these abductions. Now you Abductions? What? But what about John? Let's go talk to him. He's probably home. Let's go. Oh. It's like bad lip reading. It's, it's really <laughs> yeah. interesting. Vinegar Syndrome is the New York Ninja. They're the, they're the real heroes. Yeah, they're heroes for... Like, we watched it with audio, and I still... I have no idea what was going on. <laughs> like, none of us could... <laughs> Could piece the story together, so it's safe I don't know. To assume, assume they didn't have a script. The old, no, like, they did not have a script. script. Okay, they had nothing. nothing. They so were just going off of like people's mouths. How do you do this? Look at the mouths. But I'm looking at it from their perspective, if you find these, you know, reels with yeah. no audio, no idea which what order what, or anything goes, it wasn't even edited, right? It was no, just like it was just loose the reels. Yeah. How the hell do you kind of make something 
I, I don't say, know, comprehensible, but I'd say they did a really, pretty damn good job it's with what they had to work with. Uh, it made perfect sense. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why is this happening? Why won't anyone do anything? I don't understand. <laughs> what is she doing? She may as well be walking Why? into rakes. Why? Why? Yes! <laughs> I'll say though, I mean, uh, good for them because if you just find raw footage from some movie that was shot in the mid 80s, some no budget action thing, there's a 99% chance that it's just gonna be boring garbage. Right. And they, stumbled on a Miami connection, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. I thought this was a fantastic movie. Believe me, I am. But this isn't helping. Just go home and I'll call you with anything. Wait. What? This city owes me. Well, what's that? Justice. <laughs> Good luck, Mr. Lou. I'm gonna walk into this fence. <laughs> Yeah, where are they supposed to be? They're not outside of like a precinct. He's a Terminator. He's gonna walk through the fence. Yeah. <laughs> just, I just, just, just to clarify, though, I mean, this is not the original audio tracks, and they actually got a decent cast together to do this. Yeah, oh. era appropriate talent. They got yeah, the the New York Ninja is voiced by Don the Dragon Wilson. It's not fair. It's not fair. Who does his voice? Uh, Don the Dragon Wilson. Why? <laughs> Why? Yeah. Oh, oh my god, he broke that, oh. that balsa wood table. <laughs> um, his reporter friend lady is Linnea Quigley. That gives us all hope. This is Randy Rydell reporting for Channel 6 News. Cop Bad lady guy. is Cynthia Rothrock. Bad guy's Michael Berryman. Right. A star-studded affair. Plutonium killer. And it would be very uh, tempting. And a retired porn actress. <laughs> oh, do you want me to tell my Ginger Lynn Allen story? Jay, you tell your Ginger Lynn Allen story. All right. Well, the okay. New York Ninja's wife gets killed at the beginning of the film uh, when we thought we knew what type of movie it was going to be before it subverted our expectations. But his wife is voiced by Ginger Lynn Allen, who was a porn star in the 80s, and she was apparently in a Metallica video. And she's from my hometown of Rockford, Illinois, and when I uh, was in high school, I worked at a Kmart. Do y'all remember Kmart? <laughs> um, and she came in one time, and the, I had no idea who she was, but the guy in the sporting goods department was like, do you know who that is? He's like, I don't know. He's like, this is Ginger Lynn Allen. She's fucking hot. She's a porn star. She's a Metallica video. <laughs> and she's there. She was presumably lived in LA, so she's probably back visiting family because she was pushing around her elderly grandmother in a wheelchair <laughs> oh, no. while the dope and sporting goods. She's fucking hot. Look at her fucking hot porn store. Push that fucking elderly woman in a wheelchair. Oh, Kmart. Are you oh. sure he wasn't talking about the elderly woman? I, I guess it's possible. <laughs> <you know. laughs> Generations of porn stars. <laughs> she's a porn star in the 1930s. If she takes over. She's like the new Ginger Lynn. <laughs> Generation XXX. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Menudo. It's like they get in the yeah, new. Yeah, yeah. You know, bring in new ones. Yeah. Uh, so what's the plot of... Uh, Please, somebody, somebody. <laughs> well, like I said, before we get into the full plot, okay. the opening of the movie is, uh, you're my wife, I'm your husband, <laughs> you're pregnant, we are the happiest people in New York City. And so we're like, okay, well, she's gonna get killed, obviously. And then I thought it was gonna be a pretty straightforward action revenge movie. Mm -hmm. But instead, what we got is a superhero film. Uh, yeah. Oh my God. It's, it goes off the rails in the first 10 seconds. <laughs> and a super well, villain. He, he runs into his, a girlfriend, wife? His wife. Wife, okay. And they're at the base of the World Trade Center towers. Uh, First shot of the movie, yeah. Yeah, and and she and he is, oh, she's crossing the street. And he like <laughs> grabs her on her shoulder and he's like, hey, it's me, your husband. <laughs> she's like, it's me, your wife. I love you. <sighs> Happy birthday. Aww. Uh, I'm pregnant. Okay, bye. <laughs> and that was the scene. <laughs> it's like, it was like so, like, you, you want to set up that relationship and, and her d divulging yeah, the yeah. information that they're going to have a child together. You don't want to do it on a street corner? 
That's efficiency. I think though. it's instant production you know, value is what you it know is. everything you need to know about them. They went well, out at seven a.m. and were able to film on the streets in New York before well, she, it got too busy. It's also she shot said, with the back and forth where it's like they're looking right into the lens. <laughs> like he's looking into the lens. Cut to her looking. In, it's like Jonathan Demi's uh, Silence of the Lambs. Like it's <laughs> it's unsettling. It's not romantic or cute. It's creepy. Well, before we get really into the production, I didn't know this until the very end of the film. The star, the New York Ninja, his name is. John so, Liu? John Liu. Yeah. He is also the director and creator and writer. Yeah. So it's not just, he's not just an actor who's portraying the, the He's New not York just Ninja. a pretty face. He's not just a pretty face. <laughs> he's exactly what you want from a bad movie, the writer, director, star. Someone who has no idea what to do, <laughs> or no idea how to make a movie, right? Mm -hmm. And that's him, and oh boy. Uh, you know what he, he does know how to do, though, is get as much production value as possible out of New York City. That's true. Oh, yeah. That's true. As, as we learned a long time ago, we shot a Ghostbusters location video, mm. and uh, it's very different than shooting something on the street here in Milwaukee, mm -hmm. where everybody wanders up to you, what are you filming? Is this going to be on the news? <laughs> in New York City, you're in their way, yeah. and, and nobody gives a fuck. So you can flip over a car in the middle of the street and nobody cares. <laughs> as they do in the as, movie. As they do in the movie. They did not get permits to block that street off. They just found some street that nobody really goes down. They smashed up a car, they flipped it over, and they probably just ran away <laughs> after they did it. Yeah, this, this great uh, guerrilla filmmaking. They, they called the police afterwards to say, somebody flipped over my car. <laughs> Who gives a fuck? My God, look what Shit. they're doing. Hang on, get ready. <laughs> they're destroying I gotta get this on car. film. <laughs> These guys are probably on This track. is gonna make the five o'clock news. <laughs> Man, uh, my Jack. Thugs destroy car. Jack, that's your car. What? <laughs> he didn't realize I didn't know. that? I think that was supposed to be a little humorous. Hey, thing. Yeah. that's my car. <laughs> we got real crimes to solve. This is the 80s in New York City. We got a plutonium killer to track down. <laughs> but there is there are there is great guerrilla shooting when yes. they're out in like right outside of like Radio City Music Hall or mm -hmm. and and there's like these guys the the, the villains like roving street gangs who wear ridiculous costumes cartoonish are like attacking people and they're just New Yorkers are just walking by. Yeah, it's like don't even bat an eye. Happens they gotta every, get to the deli. Happens every day. It's a, yeah. it's a beautiful scene from Gremlins 2. Oh uh, yeah. When the winged the gremlin is attacking uh, Mr. Futterman in broad daylight and <laughs> New Yorkers are just walking by <laughs> like it's just some kind of mild nuisance. <laughs> they don't even care. It's, uh, that's, it's, it's great. It's, it's also great. worth pointing out that that's 90s New York. This is 80s New York where everything's covered in graffiti and looks like shit. Mm. Those trains. Like were, an oh impressive amount of graffiti. Oh, yeah. yeah. It wasn't, the trains it wasn't, were insane. Yeah, yeah. the subway. Like graffiti, they found the worst the subway station to film in. That was just atrocious. It was great. Um, but like every scene, it's like they they had to like escalate like the costumes into like more ridiculous cartoonish territory. Come here. Oh. Oh. Take that. <laughs> Just have everything play out in these wide shots. We suspect because they're trying to hide their extras, like reuse them, right? The yeah, it was like the same five and guys, and they would just have like. like it's not just the same five gang members. <laughs> There's hundreds of different gang members. They did have the one like cowboy guy that was in kind of every gang. Yeah. Though. Gotta have the it did take game. us like half the movie to realize that all these random gangs were not tied to the main villain's plot. Well, because it turns into what we think is gonna be the revenge movie, where I've got to get revenge on the guy who killed my wife. Mm -hmm. Instead, he just kind of becomes a ninja-themed superhero. Yeah. Yes. So it's very Spider-Man-esque. Yes. Where he's a, he's a vigilante, the police don't like him, the public doesn't and does, or you know, like something he, like that. He works for the news, and frequently superheroes have some kind of job in like a news agency, newspaper, television crew, because that's how they hear about the crimes. That's right. We didn't even know he worked for the news though, until no, that's three not quarters of the way well. through the movie. It's like, like halfway. Oh, okay. Yeah. But it's that's a very like Superman where he's like with yeah. the news crew and then he's like, I'm gonna go get food and then he leaves. And then the New York ninja shows up. <laughs> Coincidentally, right when he leaves. That's when you recognized exactly what they were up to. Hey, I'm hungry. I'll be right back. Stay here. <laughs> <laughs> 
He's no, he's doing the superhero thing. He's oh, I gotta go, and now he's gonna show oh. up and beat those guys as the ninja. Is that what's happening? And then I'm, so. I bet he's gonna go back in the car. He's gonna. What did I miss? Yeah. That's oh gonna happen. Oh my god! Incredible. Where did he come from? Where did he go? Hey, <laughs> did I miss anything? Yeah. yeah. Oh no! <laughs> so he's super. Yeah. That's the thing. He just, okay. <laughs> they can't know. Ooh. What's your ability to write bad <laughs> 80s movies? <laughs> Continues to astound. <laughs> There's a bit with the cufflink, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, well, his wife, in the very next scene after they meet, kind of interrupts an abduction. Yeah. Uh, these guys are like abducting a woman, yes. pulling her into a car, and she drops her purse, and then the wife picks it up, uh, and they immediately kill her. She's kind of like collateral damage in the middle of this bigger plot where the plutonium killer is kidnapping women for a prostitution ring. Plutonium Man is the head of this prostitution ring and he has gang member guys that go around and they kidnap women. Uh, he tells them which specific women to kidnap. Yeah, he gets them Not just shots. like, go find women. He has their, all their headshots, like their actresses' headshots. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, go find all these women and bring them to this warehouse. But the, no Johns ever show up. There's no like like pimp who takes out the girl to like a hotel. They just tie them up in a warehouse and that's a prostitution ring. Or let them roam free in a field once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> under a bridge, under for, a bridge. For and exercise. Shirtless. They have to wear like, yeah, basically no clothing. Uh, but there's no, there doesn't seem to any, be any kind of business mo uh, model here. With, but then he also... This, there, this movie was unfinished in a dumpster. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... Back away from the women and put your... Is there a solar eclipse happening? <laughs> 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 the light has dramatically changed. Is it supposed to be day for night, maybe? It's supposed to be day for solar eclipse. <laughs> <laughs> Also, that reporter is starting to get too close. There's also another, uh, that trio of guys yeah. that are first abducting, that kill uh, New York Ninja's wife. Yes. Uh, they're That's like a Cufflink secondary man. gang? They work for a plutonium killer. We think. To abduct women. <laughs> but, he, but he also has the street gangs? I don't well, the street, know. Gangs, no, are I think the street gangs are just unrelated. Are they? Okay, they're, they're are just they? there to establish <laughs> that New York Ninja is kicking ass. In order to avoid confusion, the street gangs <laughs> needed to do other kinds of crimes than kidnap and attack women. Look, the, the guy who made this like, movie has seen one movie before, so that's all that exists in his this, mind is this rape. This movie was found in a dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> the, person, the, person, the person making it had enough self-awareness to say, oh, this is trash, and he threw it out. No. To be and fair, then, I think what happened is they ran out of money, and that's why they didn't finish okay. editing it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Just stand there. We needed to see some classic, like, uh, liquor store robbery. Where, oh, where yeah. The New York Ninja comes in and saves the store owner from being robbed. It doesn't happen. The classic 80s robbery where the, the hero does more damage to the store <laughs> than the robbers were actually stealing. Yeah. You're welcome, citizen. <laughs> well, you're leaving out the most important and baffling aspect of Plutonium Man, which is that once in a while he melts <laughs> and, and, and maybe orgasms, <sighs> and that makes him not melt anymore. <sighs> can, can I, I have just, literally uh, no clue what any of that let, was supposed to be. Let me just explain real quick Plutonium Man's progression. <laughs> uh, he walks around with like Doc Ock goggles, basically, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, because the sun burns him. Even though he's outside during the day all the time. I think it's like the, the, he's Maybe just sensitive to like the, his eyes. His, are just his eyes, his eyes. Yes. Okay. Uh, The first time we, not the first time we see him, but uh, an important time we see him, he's holding a box and it says something like dangerous material inside yeah. or something. He opens it up and green light comes out. 
and it starts melting. Is why you would open up a box of plutonium and stick your face in it? I don't know. But Maybe he that does. rejuvenates him. If it wasn't for that, he would melt further. Okay. Maybe. But he was fine before he opened it. Then he melted. I don't know. Well, uh, he's got some kind of superpowers because he can also apparently turn into other people, as we find right. out five minutes before the movie yeah, ends. Yeah, he has a, a face-off <laughs> moment. He's like Clayface or changes something. Changes his face to look like the cameraman who, who gets killed Jimmy earlier Olson, in the film. Jimmy Olsen, yeah. Yes. Uh, so he looks into a box of plutonium and maybe orgasms. <laughs> then later on, he kidnaps at the Halloween, outdoor Halloween in, uh, oh, yeah. what, what park is that with the arch? Um, Cathedral oh, Square. That sounds right. Yeah, yeah, the New York City. There's a Halloween party and they're shooting the rodeo. Yes. Um, and then this is a backdoor Halloween film. He has the power of hypnosis. He can hypnotize women with a little gold chain. Right. Remember, he hypnotizes a lady and gets her to come back into the back of his limo. And then we think he's having sex on her. <laughs> And That's then, a good way to put it. He's not having sex with her. He's having sex on her. She is. I don't know if she's a willing per, or unwilling participant. She, she's hypnotized. But he's having sex with this lady in the back of his limo, and then he starts plutoniumizing himself, <laughs> and then he starts melting. And he then touches his, her back. Oh, there's a thing with his hands, where his hands are normal, and then they get all burnt. Then he, he burns her back, and I guess she dies. And then the next morning, he's like, uh, in the back of his limo. So we think there's a sexual component to his plutoniumness. <laughs> oh no, he's melting again! What the fuck is this? <laughs> is, it, is it plutonium fetish? I don't know. But it makes absolutely no sense, which is why it's That's wonderful. That's the scene that you missed. <laughs> I know. And we were, I was hoping, well, I wasn't hoping, but. We should have showed it to you before you came on the discussion panel. You probably should have. It sounds like it was amazing and integral to the plot and. We're just ill prepared for a proper New York Ninja discussion. <laughs> Damn it. I think we are, yeah. <laughs> He looks like Chris Maloney. <laughs> so he stops melting after he comes. What is? I don't understand. I don't know. What if it's like? What if he's like, uh, like Polka Dot Man in the Suicide Squad? Oh yeah. Where like once a day, Polka Dot Man has to just like yeah. vomit these polka dots, or he, or his face will get fucked right. up. Yeah. Maybe that's Plutonium Man. He has to ejaculate plutonium once a day so he doesn't and melt. regenerate himself. Yeah. yeah. He has yeah. to expunge the, the the toxins in his body <laughs> all over some lady in the back of his dirty <laughs> cracker crumb filled limo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I just don't know what was happening. Uh, and then, how does he put on someone else's face? How does any he of that burned, work? He burned a photo of the guy. Uh, apparently, he also knows like voodoo magic. There's a mystical element There's as well. There's a mystical yeah. element as well. Wait, uh, what? Uh, now, Plutonium Man looks like uh, what? <gasps> Is he jumping? Different bodies? Is he Diddy? Dark Man? Maybe he can like transform into the person. Yeah, because he burned his picture, so he became him. <laughs> what? Like, this oh is way God. too late in the movie to introduce that. <laughs> what is this? Was this a, was it the kind of thing where they didn't have the actor anymore? That's I was thinking that, that for, could be. for a minute, but but it ended oh. so abruptly. Well then he rips the face off, so it's actually the other the real actor. Yeah, here's a, they here's, must have planned it. Here's yeah. a question. The, uh, Plutonium man really wants to kidnap news reporter lady, like is hell bent on it. Bad that's, wig lady. That's why he changes into Jimmy Olsen, the cameraman. Mm -hmm. He tries to get her on a helicopter. I, th I think she's other. getting too close. Yeah, she's the, reporting. Oh, she's she's investigating. investigating. You're right, but they never aired anything. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> she's interviewing the mayor, remember that one scene? <laughs> oh, that <laughs> was getting too, too close. And then they kidnap her mid-interview? Yeah. They beat up the mayor Fuck and then they, mayor. they, yeah, well. I don't know. I don't know where I was going with that. But that's the movie didn't know. The movie didn't know where I was yeah. going with that's it. That's when our intimidating thugs get beaten up by children. <laughs> <laughs> He's inspiring Jesus the city. Christ. Shoot all the kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, film it. This makes me look real good. <laughs> <laughs> they just like stab him to death. <laughs> oh, After yeah. that happens, that's when, that's when I guess all the local kids have rallied behind New York Ninja, even though there's been no, I guess there was like one newspaper headline 
It's like, we have a New York Ninja. There, there was a three week break after New York Ninja rescued Short Round. Yes, in and a then, very uncomfortable scene. In a very uncomfortable scene. Oh, New York yeah. Ninja gets shot through the heart <laughs> and pulls the bullet out with a knife. He just got shot? Yeah. Oh. Just getting credits. He's not a good ninja. He was showing off. Oh, oh my gosh. Uh, what? Everybody's dead. <laughs> Short round also gets shot, but we don't see where, and New York Ninja heals him with aromatherapy. They're, they're, he's cradling him in his arms. Yeah, and they're he's all sweaty, and they're both shirtless. And the shirtless. child is shirtless and sweaty. Yeah. And then he shows him to fish while he's naked. <laughs> he's, he get, then he gets in a little tiny Speedo and wants to show him how, yeah, how to catch some fish. <laughs> Here's how you grab something that's slippery and wet. Oh, yeah. yeah you just get right in there. Do you think when they came across that reel, it was like no audio? It was just like... What, was that, what, what if that was the first thing they watched? That, <laughs> that's how the reel started, was just him and the Speedo and that's the little boy. That's when you're like halfway through what the restoration. We find? That, that's when you're like, maybe we should turn this footage over to the authorities. Yeah. <laughs> it's just them like all sweaty and bare chested, him and the little boy. And then, <laughs> then they're, what kind, of, what kind of movie is this? <laughs> Also, we, we never see the footage being aired, but his news uh, reporter friends also videotape him as the white ninja, or the New York ninja. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, and there's also, unrelated, there's tourists that videotape him yeah. during, uh, during the famous roller skating scene where oh, New yeah. York ninja has roller skates for a little while. Oh, it's, it's, so it's a subplot. He becomes a New York phenomenon. But they right. don't really show that. There's no, never they don't. news footage. There's a couple newspaper headlines that yeah. are kind of comical, but that's about it. Usually it cuts to like a crowd at like a bar or something, like watching yeah. a TV. Yeah. Like, we yeah, love New York ninja. Yeah, New York well, they, got ninja. Some, they got some great like b roll for the credits that they could have like just put somewhere in the middle of the movie. Yeah, to that's, that's, that's that. weird. Yeah, they show that it's just like leftover footage. We'll put it over the credits, but it really should have been a little like montage in the middle of the film. Well, do you know for sure that the point when they ran out of money was for post production, or was it like ninety percent of the way through the movie? Because I, I have no you know, idea. to the movie's credit, there might have been stuff they didn't film. Yeah, and so we have to take that into account too. Sure. Like maybe they did have a scene where the news director's like. Okay, air the footage, and then they show it playing on the screen. People watching on TV. Yeah, yeah they, they yeah. just didn't get around to filming that because they ran out of money. It's it's a possibility. But also, it's the only thing that could. Explain. God bless Vinegar Syndrome for not attempting to film new footage. Oh yeah. god, that would be awful. Right, right. There's Try a to... recent uh, uh, movie called Grizzly Two, that was shot in the '80s as a sequel to a movie called Grizzly, and they they had all the footage, and it's like young Charlie Sheen is in it, and young Laura Dern is in it, and they finally finished it like this year but it's missing half the footage. So they just shoved in like completely out of place HD, like uh, B-roll footage, like stock footage, and it's fucking awful. Mm. So this, this is how you restore an unfinished movie. Let it speak for itself. Yeah. I don't need to add anything. Um, yeah, to their credit. I literally mean, couldn't it. speak for itself. <laughs> 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 Ah, ah, oh, power! Ah, my only weakness. He always like attacks people with like the the hard boiled eggs. <laughs> hard boiled eggs filled with baking powder. I don't know what, I don't they know were. what that's supposed it's, to be. It's one of his superpowers. Yeah. He he throws eggs with baking powder at people. They probably envisioned them to be like like big poofs of smoke, yeah. like ninjas do. And but then, he just sort of that's how it, it just yeah it's just, it just baking like, powder. <laughs> <laughs> When you have a, a bad movie, the worst thing you can do is try to deliberately make it funny. The things that make bad movies funny is that they are unintentionally funny. Right. Like the fight sequences. Oh, yeah, I want to mention that. Uh, we haven't gotten to the, the, the amazing action sequences yet. I can't believe it. Keep filming. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we got ourselves a hero. <laughs> This is some lady back there, <laughs> yeah. walking home. Just taking her groceries from her car. <laughs> <laughs> She's going to the laundromat. 
Okay, one All at right, a time. Do your, do, your, do your standing animation. Where you put, yep. Here we go. <laughs> there go. Everybody wait. Oh. oh. Just stand there. Just stand there. Don't hit him in the back. His back is turned. You don't hit him. Wait your turn. <laughs> to his credit, though, he's pretty competent as a martial artist. Oh, sure. But oh, yeah, he was the choreographer as well. We have to mention yeah. that. Yeah. He's less competent at filming <laughs> fight scenes. You don't like winners? You don't. <laughs> <laughs> You don't want one. It's like Old Boy. There's that amazing one shot <laughs> exactly. in Old Boy. It's the exact same thing. <laughs> this is like a movie of all those scenes. There's like, there's like seven Old Boys in this. It almost feels like a parody because you have, that's a running joke people always have about group action fight scenes is that the villains come at the main character one at a time. Here you but can usually, kind of see it all. Yeah, usually it's shot in a way where it's like, oh, they run into frame, so you're not really thinking about it. Here, they're just standing there. <laughs> they're doing their video game, like, idle animation yeah. in the yeah, background, yeah, yeah. too. <laughs> it's like in the character selection scene in, like, Mortal yeah. Kombat oh, yeah, or yeah. whatever. <laughs> Johnny Cage. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, gosh. Well, there's that amazing moment when, uh, what's the news reporter lady's name, Brandy? I know that I should help him, but I'm not sure that I can. Now, uh, Randy. Randy? Randy? I think it's Brandy. This is Randy Rydell reporting for Channel 6 News. I think it was yeah. Randy. I think it was Randy. Well, like, voiced by Linnea Quigley. Randy Quigley. something, yeah. But uh, she, they're, they're being attacked by one of the many un, un, unnamed gangs. She runs up the stairs and opens the door, and another one just pops out <laughs> like a yeah. like a like a haunted house <laughs> character. <laughs> yeah, it kind of felt like you were playing like Double Dragon or something like that. And you get too close to like a background door, and then <laughs> the guy comes out. <laughs> There's no room. Oh, God. This is almost unbelievable. Oh, uh, how many times did she avoid getting kidnapped? Yeah. yeah. A dozen. And why did she have a fake wig on for the entire film? I thought that was going to pay off somehow. Yeah. Or maybe she wasn't blonde and didn't want to dye her hair, and then that was yeah, the only maybe. reason. But why did she? She didn't need to be blonde. I didn't that, realize, because, uh, Mike, you pointed out that all the women I sent us are... down on a wrong path. Because, yeah, it looked like every woman that was being kidnapped had a shortcut blonde hair. Yeah. And that even when he hands out the headshots, they all kind of look the same. So I thought, oh, maybe Plutonium Man, you know, he got, he got wronged by his uh, ex-wife or something, right. and he hates women with short blonde hair. Um, That's why I assume Brandy had the wig on. He's like, oh, at some point in the movie, he's going to cut her hair. You said that. Yeah. yeah. This does not pay off. <laughs> yeah. They did. They did stumble onto to gold here. It's, it's amazing. Like I said, like it, it's yeah. I mean, I really, especially early on, I was expecting a more typical action revenge movie that would be like, I don't know, like L.A. Wars or one of those movies we watch. where like, that's a decently entertaining uh, B movie. Where you can kind of predict where it's gonna go. Yeah, and, like, but I was up. not expecting Plutonium Man. It is. <laughs> I was not expecting a, a Halloween parade or uh, any of the amazing action sequences. What about Rat Tail? Now, <laughs> the rat tail the ra ninja fight. The plutonium man's driver. This is his driver. Uh, and he has like uh, this thing where he puts his rat tail in his mouth whenever he's killing people. It's he's, really gross. he's like a pervy weirdo. Um, and they get in a fight, a sword fight, which I think is. One it's of the, the best sword one fight of the ever the funniest <laughs> things I've ever seen. Like, I was laughing so hard. <laughs> I was crying laughing. <laughs> oh. He's got two. He's got double sword. Wow! Betsy, you can trust me, Ninja. You're trying. It's a combination of bad choreography, uh, no cutaways, no coverage, and we're losing light while yeah, we're it's filming getting, the it's, scene. And it has no end. We yeah. don't know what happened. I think they just ran out of light. I think he just cut somebody, falls over. Huh. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> 
What is that? What? He's drunk. Oh, no, he's he's drunk. drunk. He's doing like drunken boxing. <laughs> 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 what? <laughs> it's a style of martial arts. Is it? Yeah, drunken boxing. Oh my god. Oh my god. There's lights. <laughs> We're just losing light like crazy. <laughs> And that's the, that's the neat thing, not neat thing. I, I don't <laughs> know what, I, it's a thing. <laughs> it's something to, uh, that's noteworthy. You watch the movie and you see New York Ninja and then there's five villains around him. And you could just see all the choreography as it happens, yeah. as it was planned. But it's all like, it's like, what was a Canadian movie? The, the Twin Dragons guy, their first one where they know exactly how they want everything chore choreographed, but they have no idea how to film it. Right. Just like from you a could wide, make that. Yeah. You have, wide to, you have to be able to like, oh, this one guy, like you quick cut. They have to come elbow. into frame yeah. for one thing. Oh, well, of so course. So you can't yeah. see them all just standing there. You have five guys that approach, and then you do a bunch of quick cuts. Punch, punch. One guy falls down. You don't see where he went off frame. You don't know like. You kind of jumble it up, so so. You and you can't... make it quick enough, so it's not obvious that there's a henchman behind you waiting. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And then this guy, you know, he might have been good at martial arts, but he had no idea how to film an action scene. Well, yeah. maybe so. maybe they never got around to filming the inserts. Uh, so this is just the this is just the wide. I'm gonna go, I with, mean, the, right, I'm gonna go right, with the big no on that. Should have gone Everybody wait. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him back there just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you found our footage? Well, that wasn't all the footage. Yeah. Some of it's still in a warehouse somewhere, maybe. Some of it's in, in the other <laughs> warehouse. Some of it's in another the dumpster. dumpster. Your footage is in another <laughs> castle. <laughs> oh, the other footage was in the dumpster that had that fire. <laughs> That's where all the good footage that would make yeah. the movie make sense was. Maybe they Whoops! <laughs> they, they split it up. It's like, you know, when you dismember a body and you kind of like dump it in a dumpster here, <laughs> and dump it in a dumpster there. It's not all in one area. It's like spread out across, you know. Speaking of a body in an alley, we oh. have the amazing scene. <laughs> Where the cops are investigating oh one of the plutonium killer's victims. Is mm -hmm. it the one he has sex with? Yes. yes. Yeah, it is. He dumps her in a, in a garbage can. <laughs> garbage like, <laughs> sitting in the garbage can. Like. This is like this, covered in yeah, a garbage bag. And I thought they were going to like drag her body out of the alley, but they just kind of take it off of a little platform and then just leave it in a fucking garbage can. <laughs> and everybody walks away from her and they just leave her there, folded up in a, in a garbage can. <laughs> Just leave it there! <laughs> <laughs> what? All right. We're, we're done. We're oh done. Feet. We're done. Yeah. Give me some dignity. It's about the missing women. I need your help. He's still wearing his hat like that. And I think you can help me. It looks like a, like a fast food employee hat <laughs> when it's pushed down like that, you know? Maybe it was really tall. Well, yeah. <laughs> they thought this would look less distracting. <laughs> yeah, why would have it at all? <laughs> but who yeah. was in charge of his wardrobe on the movie set? Somebody. Because nobody told him that his hat is not the on right. The hat is so strange, and I don't even know how to start talking. It's not like it's, it's like a one-time accident, because multiple scenes, he's wearing a trucker cap, but the top of it is like, tucked in to the front of the cap? It's like pushed down, yeah. It's so weird. I've never seen anyone wear a hat like that before. And it just has a big It S seems on like it. if it weren't tucked though, it would be comically tall. Right. For yeah, maybe that's that was what I'm why saying. Maybe it was like a top hat, like a trucker top Well, he hat. had kind of like a like a, like a a big uh, kid and play haircut. Like a, like like a, a flat top. Yeah, flat top. Or a and cameo. So maybe he- was Cameo like angled. No. I was gonna say, maybe he didn't want the cap to smoosh on his hair. But that wouldn't make sense because then he would want the cap at its highest length. <laughs> <laughs> what, if the, what if the cap was like perfectly formed in like oh, a, yeah. the kid and play? Like, <laughs> <kind of stuff? laughs> well, the cap is part of his undercover costume, and that's an all, all another thing in the movie. Him and oh, the first time we see female detective agent, right? Right. 
She's wearing Ooh, that's, a, uh, Cynthia, Cynthia Rothrock. Rothrock. Yes, she's wearing a medical doctor's coat that I guess is a detective's yeah, we, coat. We thought she was like the, I thought the, she was the medical coroner. examiner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think in the movie's logic, that's when like the people were gonna come in and take the body away, but they don't. The fact that they don't show it is they hilarious. Move, they move no. for a foot and they leave. They all walk out of frame and they leave the medical examiner lady with the. the girl. She wasn't a medical. That was the detective. <laughs> she was a parker. <laughs> just because she was wearing a lab coat doesn't make her a medical examiner. But they just leave her. And Maybe she, she was under to cover as a medical examiner. <laughs> And then, and detective then, doctor. And then, on, <laughs> and then on the inside of her lab coat, there's a medical examiner, and they're like, "Wait a minute, she's a medical." Right, right, right. <laughs> they're horrible at being undercover yeah. because they wear their their police badges on the inside, on the inside of, their, of their like yeah. lapel. There's or, mul right. Yeah, it's something that's silly once, but it happens multiple times where they're like, "They're an undercover cop." <laughs> she's a cop. She's a cop. What? It's like, yeah, if you're going undercover, don't wear your badge. Yeah. Is that before or after New York Ninja used his news reporter friend as bait? Oh, when he says, go meet me in the meet park. Meet me at the park. Oh, yeah. And they go to, to uh, Central Park, which is very large. Listen, you have to meet me in the park as soon as you can. It's important. Rich, meet me in Central Park. <laughs> it's important. It's a small park. It's easy to find everybody. Where can he be? He's in a tree. It's his tree stand. Was he setting her up as bait? I think, oh, I think that's what's happening, okay. yeah. That's the thing too, is they treat New York like it's a small town. Everybody's just constantly running into each other <laughs> yeah, throughout right. the entire city. Multiple times. <laughs> there was that one scene where uh, Cufflinks is like kind of hanging his arm out the window. And oh yeah. New York, New York Ninja, Ninja just happens to walk by him. And then he's, he's staring at it from like six inches away. Can we talk about the amazing scene where all the prostitutes get freed? Yeah. And it's like a <laughs> temple of doom, but with prostitutes <laughs> instead of small <laughs> Indian boys. <laughs> and then they, and then when they're running for their lives, they all stop to warm up at a fire. Oh my god! Yes, right. <laughs> How fucking cold is it's it? Cold. They have to stop escaping. Warmth over safety. We're a little chilly. Okay, that's oh, enough. Okay. Right. The cops there too now. But he was and then he disappeared. Who's bad is that? He's back. Do you think that was just the actresses? <laughs> <laughs> They're freezing. They're getting, getting this creep van after the fire. <laughs> They've been, been freezing all day. It's in their so underwear. weird because they, they run directly to that pit fire. Yeah. And it's just like you're trying to escape from being prostitutes against your will. And then, you and just run, you run ten feet and you're safe. I guess yeah. yeah. They had the cop with them. They, they stopped to get warm. I don't know. Undercover I, cop goes to the prostitution ring in the filthy, disgusting, free range woods, <laughs> <laughs> and then with whip eye patch. New York Ninja follows him there. Then undercover cop gets kidnapped, and then New York Ninja has the sword fight with the drunken mm -hmm. chauffeur driver, <laughs> and then he goes home. Oh, that's the right. The next morning comes back. And then back. he comes the back morning. the next morning. <laughs> and he cuts all of the chains that the women are chained up with. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I guess he just figured oh, they'll be fine for one more night. <sighs> Get in the car. Radioactive man kidnaps cop lady and goes to a helicopter hangar. Cop lady or news lady? News lady, sorry. Yeah, news lady. And this is like almost like a spur of the moment idea. Like he I'm gonna flees flee. with her from the prostitution ring. Yeah. And heads to an uh, airport where he apparently already has henchmen who seem to coincidentally be stealing a plane. I, yeah. Or no. they were there to steal a plane for him, but he, but he didn't tried know to get in the helicopter to... first. He tried to get in the helicopter, but the door was locked. Oh, no. Uh, uh, oh, gosh, 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 Jesus, uh, son of a uh, bitch! Come on. <laughs> so. If his henchmen were there to steal a plane for him, he, I guess he didn't know which one it was. <laughs> or I should say a helicopter, because yeah, he goes into the, I think they were just able to film in a hangar. Yeah. yeah. They made the best of it. Uh, no, why are you up ninja. there? Put your hands up. Oh. I said hands up. <laughs> now what are you gonna do? A fan. You really think a fan can stop these bullets? 
<laughs> nothing hit him. Uh, nothing hit him. What? What? Well, that's like I said, early on, there's that scene where the helicopter lands and the, 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 the news people talk, and like the point of the scene is that they had a helicopter. So it's an exciting ending, though. We have uh, uh, New York Ninja hanging off of the helicopter and uh, with the magical rope that just appears. And he throws a bomb inside the helicopter. He somehow had a bomb yeah. somewhere on him it's and a threw ninja. it into there. He's a ninja. This is like, well, this is the footage we have. We have to make sense of it. There's a bomb? I don't know. That feels like almost like they made it in editing because it wasn't they, really That's what the ADR yeah. says. It's hey, is that a bomb? Sorry. Is that a bomb? <laughs> Dude, what's that sound? Is that a bomb? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> he threw a bomb in there. When did he throw a bomb in there? <laughs> well, Where did he get a bomb? At the moment he was in the cab, he threw a, a, a bomb is in there. Is that a bomb in here? For some reason, the helicopter blew up. But what was Plutonium Man? trying to do. Get away. Just get away. I think he was just trying to get away Did at that point. Did he just want the news reporter because he fancied her? Or? Who knows what the actual original intention of the movie was? Who the fuck knows? <laughs> it's, it's, I think it's just because Ninja knows her, thus giving him a reason to hunt him down. He's got the lady I know. Does he from... want to like, like lure him out or something so we can get into a, a sword fight? Uh, a collapsible sword oh, fight? He does, he does fight. Uh, plutonium killer. Yeah, Remember he's got that? a collapsible yeah, sword for yeah. some reason. You know, this is. Yeah, I was confused by that. Was it supposed to be like Ninja was cutting his sword down? Because it does just look like a collapsible sword. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure what that was supposed to be. Very badass and not awkward at all. <laughs> this is a, this is a pretty unique situation because normally we, we see the bad movies and they're confusing and we're speculating on what happened in the movie. Mm -hmm. This is a case where the people who made this are literally speculating on what happened in the movie. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Vinegar Sy Syndrome has no idea what happened in the end of this movie and they made it. They made it. There's a bomb now. <laughs> there's a bomb. <laughs> that's our guess. My guess is there's a bomb in the helicopter. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. And the movie ends with, uh, you know, how every movie should end is a rap oh, e explaining yeah. the, the plot of the movie. Over the end credits, yeah. Well, that's after New York Ninja gets away from, the cops are going to arrest him. Oh, yeah. And he just vanishes by just the, the, ducking the down. Kids, the kids come to his rescue. Yeah. The and cops are just, bringing him in. But you can see it. It's like a flat wide shot. You just see him going. He goes. And he gets away. They're all hanging out in a, like a dump. They're walking him <laughs> through like a used car lot. Yeah. yeah that's right. Or like, a, like a, like a junkyard. There's like a with a broken out window. Yeah, it's like a and, junkyard. But yeah. I think it's supposed to be the parking lot of the police station. Maybe. And then the yeah. kids all, all the kids know that he has been captured by the cops yeah. and is being brought into the police station at that exact moment. So where they could all show up with signs that they pre-made. Yeah. So the, the right. his ward, that, that child from earlier that right. he was cradling exactly. shirtless. Look, comes Everybody. Out. <laughs> the whole city like, at this point, on. they're just constantly carrying around, I love New York Ninja Science. It's just something, yeah, sure. that's just something the populace is doing. Okay, just in case he happens to be <laughs> being arrested, they could come to a base, right? Yeah. In that, in that racist uh, Asian font. Oh, did they, oh, yeah. they use Chinese takeout? <laughs> it's in, uh, I used it in Space Cop in the opening, uh, with Low Blows uh, oh, yeah. Fireworks Emporium. <laughs> It's called Chinese Takeout or Chinese Takeaway. It's a cute movie. It's, you know, like I said at the beginning, the fact that this is something they discovered that turned out to be amazing is pretty incredible. I would put this up there with a Miami Connection or a sure. uh, Hard Ticket to Hawaii, like all those types of movies. This is, it's wonderful. It's like a kind of mind bending, like I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to work out how you would even start this process of, of putting it together and making sense of it. Well, it, and just in the visuals and the way it's executed, it, it 
becomes almost like surreal at times. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's it's so absurd that it becomes something else. Yeah, it's like <laughs> not what I was expecting at all yeah. <laughs> from this movie. The ninja, huh? <laughs> <laughs> We finished the scene, we're losing light, huh? <laughs> Don't you move or I will blow your head off, asshole. Get him. One guy's not even in the net. He's just like holding onto the edge of it. Is that like a volleyball net? It yeah. looks like it is, yeah. 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 <laughs> or like, yeah, like a tennis, like a tennis court. court. Yeah. yeah. More movies like this could possibly be out there hiding in warehouse you never know. or a only dumpster. Dumpsters early, across the country. Only time will tell. I do wonder, at the end of this, they have a little tease, which I wondered if it was a joke or if they have footage for a sequel to this where it's L.A. Ninja. I want to say it's they a, have, I say I it's a joke. I doubt they have footage it, of it that. It feels like a joke. Yeah, yeah. But uh, if, if it is, that's the only joke in the movie. If right. he ran but out of I money. Would, I would love to yeah. see an L.A. Ninja. Right. If he ran out of money, he's not in teasing LA Ninja, unless he did it in, but they don't have the original cut. No, no, no so that's all They new. don't have optical yeah. like titles yeah, or anything that was, like that. Yeah, that was done after yeah. the fact. It was a joke. It's uh, more like, like you know, Escape from New York or Escape from LA. It's like, yeah. yeah. James that, Bond That's what a sequel return. would be. Right. In, in yeah, the yeah, 80s, yeah. yeah. And you, you can't make it now because that's when you try to make it bad yeah. and it no, ends no, up no, horrible. No, no, no. Have you guys ever seen Samurai Cop 2? Mm. No. <laughs>